In this video, I'm going to talk about the biosynthesis of vitamin B5, also known as pantothenate or pantothenic acid, depending on the, the uh, protonation status. Uh, but anyway, uh, we first start with this alpha-beta dihydroxy isovalerate here uh, and turn that into alpha-keto isovalerate by removing this hydroxyl group here, or we can take valine here and uh, with this transaminase we switch this uh, amine group out for this uh, ketone oxygen. So this alpha keto isovalerate can be generated uh, in either one of those two ways. Then this alpha keto isovalerate is then turned into this uh, alpha keto pantoate here with the keto pantoate hydroxymethyltransferase, otherwise known as PAN-B, uh, PAN being for uh, pantothenic acid or pantothenate because these are the enzymes in the pantothenate pathway. So this right here is also used uh, for the production of valine. Uh, so th this is used in what's called the branch chain amino acid uh, production here. So uh, going from alpha beta dihydroxy isovalerate to alpha keto isovalerate can then uh, with uh, with this, uh, this transaminase here, uh, you can actually turn it into valine. Um, and so uh, just doing this transaminase, so different transaminases can convert it back and forth. Uh, then, as I said, we have the uh, ketopentoate hydroxymethyltransferase here, it turns it into alpha ketopentoate. Uh, and then we have the uh, ketopentoate reductase, or PAN-E, uh, and then this says, uh, or uh, acetohydroxy acid ice, iso isomer reductase, uh, which uh, I'm not going to be looking at that one here, but uh, but these both can do this same reaction using NADPH to NADP. We turn the uh, alpha ketopentoate here into uh, into uh, pantoate here and you can see that that is happening uh, through a reduction of this ketone right here into an alcohol group. And so then in this other part here we take L-aspartate and we decarboxylate it so we remove this as carbon dioxide and it turns it into beta alanine. And then we take both of those two things, the pantoate and the beta alanine, uh, and using ATP we turn it into the pantothenate, which is the vitamin B5. So this is the actual vitamin B5 molecule. And this is used for generating uh, the coenzyme A so I have that down here. So we start with the pantothenate, which is this up here that we just generated, the vitamin B5. And so humans, when we get vitamin B5, we can then go through this pathway here. Uh, the pantothenate kinase uh, will turn it into 4 prime phosphopantho pantothenate. Uh, then the phosphopantothenate uh, Phosphopantothenoyl cysteine synthetase uh, actually takes cysteine, which is an amino acid, uh, and the uh, ATP here. And then, uh, so you see the ATP comes in, and we have ADP and phosphate leaving. So the ATP binds, which allows the cysteine to then uh, attack the, uh, the molecule, which releases the ADP. Uh, and so this all happens sort of in a single enzyme here. Then we have the 4 prime phosphol n pantothenoyl cysteine here. Uh, then we have the, uh, the next enzyme is the phosphopantothenoyl cysteine decarboxylase. Uh, so we're decarboxylating it to 4 prime phosphol, uh, phosphopantothene here. And the phosphopantothene adenylyl transferase turns it into D-phospho coenzyme A. Uh, 
uh, and then this ATP comes in and phosphorylates it so that it is no longer dephospho, and then we end up with the coenzyme A. So in this in the this video, I'm pretty much just going to go through this stuff in detail. I'll uh, I'll hit on this a little bit at the end, but I'm not going to go through it in the uh, in the detail that I go through to just generate the vitamin B5 because this is ultimately what this video is about is the biosynthesis of vitamin B5. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show are these two steps here. And the first one is this dihydroxy acid dehydratase, which we can see over here. Uh, and so this uh, paper that I got this mechanism from uh, wasn't sure about some of the mechanism, but uh, what they were interested in was that in E. coli, uh, then we have this uh, this Fe4S for ferredoxin here, whereas in spinach and in tuberculosis, so those are the two other structures I found, it's just this uh, F. E2S2 rather than Fe4S4 uh, ferredoxin here. Uh, but both of them do essentially the same thing. We have, uh, we have our substrate here, which is this, uh, di this uh, dihydroxy isovalerate comes in. It binds to this, uh, this ferredoxin uh, in both cases. Uh, we lose a water uh, then this does not show uh, how it's bound there. Uh, but then we, well, I'll go through this. So this is the uh, mechanism that I drew up on ChemSketch, uh, not a sponsor. Uh, so we have our dihydroxy isovalerate uh, here. So that is uh, this whole uh, moiety right here. So that came in and bound to, so I'm showing it with the, uh, the uh, Fe2S2 uh, ferredoxin here. Uh, so this is bound to the iron. Uh, then we have um, we have this serine here. So this is a serine. It, it would uh, it would be bound into the the enzyme here. So there'd be more stuff going off. But we have a serine residue here, and that deprotonates this hydrogen here which uh, we see is, is on a carbon adjacent to this carbonyl right here. And so that would be, uh, well, it's actually also adjacent to this, which is sort of uh, what matters here. But we can tell that this is going to be more acidic because it's adjacent to that carbonyl there. But our electrons collapse down onto this bond here, and uh, this leaves up here so that we actually break that bond. So we end up with this double bond here. And then uh, what's stressed in the literature is that we, uh, we then, um, so that we then add a hydrogen back onto here. So we're removing this hydroxyl and adding a hydrogen. And it's added into the same spot on the molecule, the same stereochemistry. So we're not uh, changing. So the H isn't going to come on here on that side. It is going onto the same place that the hydroxyl was. So this shows uh, some uh, base here, deprotonates this hydroxyl here. The electrons collapse down in there. The electrons in this double bond then go and grab the hydrogen off of this oxygen here. And now we have our alpha keto isovalerate here. And that is the mechanism to. Uh, to take this hydroxyl here off, uh, adding another, uh, adding a hydrogen onto it in the same stereochemistry while also turning this hydroxyl here into a ketone right there. Uh, so, well, let's take a look here at the structure. So I have this structure uh, right here. We can zoom in. We have our uh, all right, we have a magnesium right here, which um, which we can see. Well, I don't think this shows it. Uh, so that magnesium is being held into there. You can see these uh, 
these glutamates and, and so forth are holding that in there. Uh, then we can see over here, this is our ferrodoxin. We can see that this is the, uh, the uh, two sulfurs, two iron uh, ferrodoxin here uh, held in by these three cysteines. Um, I don't know if this had, I don't think this has substrate bound into the active site. Uh, but uh, we could see right here where that substrate would bind into it. And I imagine this, uh, this right here, uh, this, carboc this carboxyl group here would probably be what that magnesium is coordinating with here. So that is most likely what that magnesium coordinates with on, on the substrate there. So we can see how the substrate would fit in here with that, uh, that carboxyl group coordinating with this magnesium and then, uh, and then this uh, hydroxyl group here binding to that, uh, that ferrodoxin there. Uh, so we can kind of see where in this uh, active site that that substrate would be fitting into here. All right, so then the other way was this uh, transaminase. So I'm not going to go through this too much. Uh, what we can see here is that we have a vitamin B6. Uh, this PLP is vitamin B6. And we see that this... Uh, forms this covalent bond in the enzyme active site to a lysine here. We have this, uh, this shift base going on here. Uh, then this just shows a, a sort of uh, generic amine donor, but this, uh, in our case, this amine donor would be uh, this valine here with that amine right there. So we can imagine that this is this generic amine donor here is our valine. So that comes in, displaces the lysine as the shift base on the vitamin B6. Uh, we undergo uh, a little bit of, of a double bond moving around here. Um, and then through that, uh, we end up, uh, so we've removed an H plus uh, here from this. Um, and so then we remove another one and uh, we, we regenerate the, the aromatic ring here on the vitamin B6. Uh, and then we have a water come in. So the water H, so OH2 would come in and attack right there and end up replacing the nitrogen, which is now uh, on our, our uh, vitamin B6 here. Then we have this, uh, this carbonyl acceptor, which would be sort of taking this, uh, this here in the reverse order. And so it could be taking some other, uh, some other molecule, some other substrate, and then sort of doing the reverse reaction and uh, putting an amine onto that one. And then you can just see how that would go in a circle here. We'll see this type of thing more often in the future. So I'm not going to, uh, in future videos, so I'm not going to go into great detail with that here, but uh, just know that this uh, alpha keto isovalerate can be generated in both of these ways. And so now we want to do the uh, keto pentoate hydroxymethyltransferase here, uh, which is going to use uh, folate uh, or folic acid, which is different uh, B vitamin, uh, and we'll go through the biosynthesis of that in a later video. Uh, but we see here that what we are doing is actually um, is we're actually adding uh, another uh, carbon and uh, hydroxyl group onto this uh, this molecule right here. And so I have that mechanism down here. This is the uh, keto pentoate hydroxymethyltransferase. <clears throat> and we see we have this form of the folate, the N5, N10 uh, methylene tetrahydrofolate. And the N10 uh, has a lone pair on it that's going to uh, extract a hydrogen off of this uh, alpha keto isovalerate, which is adjacent to this. 
uh, this uh, ketone right here. Uh, and so the electrons collapse down onto this bond. These electrons move up onto the oxygen. And so we move over here and we end up with this uh, enolate intermediate here. Uh, the electrons from the oxygen collapse back down. These double bond electrons then go and attack this, which uh, could, it would also have a partial positive just from uh, from uh, resonance structure because uh, because the, this double bond is also shared onto this nitrogen here. So these electrons could attack that carbon there. Uh, and so we end up with this over here. Uh, so I uh, just kind of drew a long bond here. That bond would not actually be that long, but I just wanted to keep these, uh, these different moieties here separate from each other. Uh, so we do end up with... Um, with this uh, bound onto this carbon. So this is that carbon that was double bound to this nitrogen here. Uh, and it's now a covalent intermediate with our uh, alpha ketoisovalerate here. Uh, then we have this water here uh, comes and attacks this carbon here while this nitrogen, the lone pair on that, deprotonates the water here. Uh, and so we end up with um, with this uh, this OH here and this carbon being added onto our our molecule here, uh, and so we uh, so I just showed this coming off of that magnesium. So we end up with our keto pentoate, and we've now added this carbon here and this hydroxyl onto our our molecule here. And so we can take a quick look here at the structure for that. Uh, uh, we have another magnesium here in the, uh, in the active site. Uh, this uh, looks kind of weird and yellow here. This is the, the uh, so this would actually be the, uh, the product here. And it looks weird because they show uh, two different conformations for it. Uh, I couldn't find a structure that got rid of that, but it should just have uh, two methyl groups and then a single, uh, a single uh, uh, carbon with a, a, a hydroxyl added onto it. So this is the part that is being added onto it. We can see over here that this is uh, coordinating with our magnesium uh, right there, and so uh, we can see that this uh, this forms a, a large sort of tertiary structure as well, but uh, we're just kind of zooming in on a single subunit right here. Um, yeah, so uh, so this is that magnesium right there. We can see that in the active site right there. We can see that it's, it's coordinating with our product here. So this is after these have already been added onto it. Um, you, this does not show any uh, folate in the active site here, but um, so I would imagine that that would probably be, so if we zoom in here, we can see kind of over on the left, there's this large sort of empty space right there in the active site, and that is where I would guess that the, uh, the folate sits in the active site if you are uh, if we were able to see that, but we can't in this structure here. Uh, and so that is the second step here, uh, our ketopentoate hydroxymethyl transferase. So we have now uh, we have now added this onto it. And now we are going to reduce this carbonyl, this uh, ketone right here. Uh, once again, ketone be the specific case of, of uh, this carbon double bound to oxygen with uh, carbons on both sides. Carbonyl being sort of the generic term of a carbon double bound oxygen. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take our alpha keto pentoate here and use uh, the keto pentoate reductase to actually turn that into a hydroxyl group using uh, NADPH. And so I have that over here. So this is, uh, 
this is sort of a, a weird looking uh, mechanism here. They're, they were trying to show how these things are sitting in the active site. Um, and so what we can see here, uh, so this all right here would be our, our uh, NADPH and this right here would be our substrate right here. So we can see that we have this uh, this, hyd this hydride here. So that's an H with two electrons and a negative charge is going and attacking this uh, carbonyl carbon right here. Then the uh, electrons from the double bond under the oxygen are going and deprotonating this lysine here. And so that is how, uh, so the reduction is the electrons coming from this hydride here. And that is how we end up with uh, with our product here. And now this uh, NADPH has been oxidized to NADP+. And so we can take a look at the structure for that here. So in orange, that is our uh, NADPH. And then in yellow here is our... Uh, so this, well, it's kind of hard to tell with with this structure because it doesn't show double bonds, but this is, uh, so it, the paper said it was uh, the pantoate, which is, uh, so the keto pantoate is being gent turned into the pantoate. So this would be the, um, the product right here. And we can see that is being brought in close to this uh, ring right here on the, uh, on the NADPH, which is where that hydride uh, hydrogen is coming from. So we see that coming off of that ring right there. Uh, and we can see, uh, so that would be this, this carbon right here, I believe. Uh, no, it's just one away from, from yeah, it's this carbon right here uh, that's donating that hydrogen. And that hydrogen would be going to uh, would be going to this carbon right here. So we can see how that is being brought in close there. And then I have uh, in in magenta down here, this is that lysine, which is uh, donating the proton to this uh, this oxygen right here in order to in order to uh, to turn that into a hydroxyl group. So that's this lysine right here. Uh, so, this is the lysine 176. Yep, that's what it is in our structure here. So the numbering is the same. Uh, we can see that this is in a uh, in a dimer here, uh, but we're just zooming in on one subunit of that. Uh, but yeah, that is the uh, the structure for this enzyme. Uh, we can see. Well, so I, I don't remember if I pointed this out before, but uh, we can see kind of this structure up here. It has a specific name I don't remember, but it's very common for binding onto these uh, these nucleic, uh, these nucleotides right here. Uh, we can see that it has this sort of alpha helix to beta sheet to alpha helix to beta sheet back and forth type thing. Uh, but anyway, that's... Uh, that's kind of a little uh, sidetrack there. So we will move on to the next, which, uh, so moving back here just to get our, our bearings, we have now generated our pantoate, uh, but now we also need our beta alanine here, and that is generated from the L-aspartate. And so I have that over here. This is the aspartate-1 decarboxylase. And what's interesting about this uh, enzyme is that it uses this strange residue right here. So this is a residue that has to be generated uh, post-translationally. So the enzyme is generated uh, and then something else happens that generates this moiety here and that the mechanism for that something else is down here. Uh, so this shows we have uh, 
we have this threonine. It's hydrogen uh, binding to this carbonyl on the backbone somewhere uh, at a different location on the, the uh, protein here. Uh, then this shows that this, uh, so we have this serine 25 uh, is being deprotonated uh, and then attacking this carbonyl carbon here. Uh, so we end up, so the electrons move up onto that oxygen. So with the serine, we've generated this, uh, this uh, five member ring here. Um, and then the electrons from this oxygen collapse back down these the electrons from this bond go up and uh, grab a hydrogen off of this threonine here. Uh, then we move over to this one. Uh, we now have uh, this deprotonated threonine is going to now uh, deprotonate this carbon right here. The electrons move down. These electrons move onto this oxygen here. Uh, and then we end up, uh, so we go over here, we end up with with uh, with these two uh, moieties here, this shows uh, some some other multiple steps going on here. Uh, but we have this double bind uh, carbon, double bind carbon, and this amine group here, and those get traded out for this uh, the single uh, single bind bound carbon and this. Uh, <laughs> this ketone uh, here. So we have these two ketones right next to each other and that is what we have uh, going on up here with these two ketones next to each other. And so uh, the mechanism is that uh, this nitrogen uh, will attack that carbon right there so we end up forming this uh, this shift base here. Uh, then the electrons from that move uh, up onto this bond here. The electrons on this oxygen moving up to that oxygen. So we now have this carbon-carbon double bond in this hydroxyl group here. Uh, this shows the electrons collapsing back down. Uh, these, the electrons from this double bond collapsing back down. Then the electrons from this uh, going over to grab onto a hydrogen. Uh, so this would be grabbing onto a hydrogen from something. Uh, we can just put a little R there uh, so that we now have the this hydrogen on here and we've uh, reformed our shift base. And so the shift base, uh, so that can be removed so we could have maybe uh, a water here come and attack that and remove this. And so now we've we've uh, we've removed this uh, this CO2 right here. We've removed this carboxylic acid here, and now we're just left with that uh, that amine right there, and that is um, that's the mechanism for that. Uh, one other thing too about this enzyme is that it's uh, it's regulated. Uh, so this enzyme is called Pan D, and there's this other en uh, molecule called or protein called Pan Z. Uh, so this is uh, zymogen. This is kind of a fancy word for uh, not yet active uh, protein. So this shows that it, it is a uh, tetramer here. Uh, then we can have uh, this coenzyme A, which, as I said, is sort of the, the ultimate product. Uh, so it's what vitamin B is, is used for, is generating this. And so this actually activates the pan Z. The pan Z then binds to the uh, the pan D zymogen, uh, which uh, then actually activates the pan D uh, in in this way. It actually uh, generates this uh, double carbonyl uh, residue right there. So it activates it that way, uh, yet it inhibits the pan D. Uh, if there is this um, this uh, coenzyme A present, uh, when coenzyme A concentration goes down, then the pan Z uh, uh, dissociates from our pan D tetramer, and we end up with the active form of the pan D, which can then generate our uh, our beta alanine here. And so uh, the structure for it is. Uh, is shown right here. So in 
cyan on this side. That is that pan Z. We can zoom in here and we can actually see our acetyl-CoA here in orange uh, being stabilized with this magnesium. So that is bound into our pan Z there. Then up over here, uh, this is actually the pan D. So I have the pan D uh, uh, separated into um, its two components. So the red and the yellow. So I guess I should have mentioned before that during this process, as we can see, we are actually breaking bonds on here. And so uh, this is actually separating the, the enzyme into two different uh, separate domains uh, that remain associated with each other. Uh, and so we can see one of the domains I have in yellow, the other is in red. Uh, this thing here in cyan is our, uh, is our residue that has been modified. Uh, and so this, uh, this yellow here and this red here would be bound if we did not have that residue there. Uh, and so we can see how the uh, pan Z and the pan D are, um, are sort of uh, associating with each other here. Um, I believe that uh, there was, I, I think, yeah, so I think that this three and in here uh, actually comes from the pan Z. Um, and so that is probably, uh, so 72, uh, that's 57. Uh, but yeah, uh, the pan Z though is needed for, uh, for that, the generation of this, uh, this modified residue here. Um, and so up here, I, uh, I have copied over from one of the papers, which as usual, you can find all of the resources and references in the description down below. Uh, and so they have added the uh, ADC, which is the uh, alanine decarboxylase. That's what that stands for. And we can see that uh, that the the uh, kinetics of it that uh, that the uh, V max here is much higher than uh, when we add. Uh, when we add 1.3 micromolar of the pan Z. And then if we add uh, even more of the pan Z, we see that uh, our V max is, is quite a bit lower. So we can see how that is inhibiting the activity. So this is uh, uh, aspartate, aspartate um, uh, substrate here. So that's the concentration they're using. That's the, the substrate which is turned into the uh, the beta alanine. And so we can see that the the uh, turnover is much slower when we add more of that pan Z and that happens in a uh, dose dependent uh, dose dependent manner there. All right, and so now we have generated our pantoate and our beta alanine here and so now we need to use our, pantoth our pantothenate synthetase, or PAN-C, to, uh, to, use, to uh, take both of those and turn them into our, our pantothenate, or pantothenic acid. So the first step here is we have our panto-8, uh, which then attacks this ATP on this phosphate here. Uh, and so that is going to release this pyrophosphate here, which I have, which I show here, the pyrophosphate coming off. And so now we have uh, our pantoate here, which is covalently bound to, uh, well, this is now AMP, since we have lost our pyrophosphate. Then we take our beta alanine comes in, and that the nitrogen from that attacks this carbonyl here which will detach the AMP from all of this. And we move over here, uh, our AMP comes off and we have now uh, generated this bond here. And we now have our pantothenic acid or vitamin B5. <clears throat> and so this is the uh, structure for that.
we have here in gray, this is a uh, the intermediate here. So we can see this is the phosphate. This uh, over here is our AMP. And this right here is uh, our pantothenate here. Um, I think there is... Yeah, in yellow here, that is our, uh, that is beta alanine. Uh, we can see that that is uh, actually kind of overlapping with our pantothenate there. Uh, but we can see how that beta alanine would be brought in close in order to, uh, to bind onto, um, onto this. It would bind onto this carbon right here that has the uh, double bound oxygen. Uh, and so we can see how uh, that, uh, yeah, we can see how that uh, would happen here in the active site. Um, I think there was, yeah, uh, that, yeah, that's just the intermediate there and, uh, and uh, our beta alanine there in yellow. And as so is so often the case, we have a magnesium here stabilizing the phosphate. Um, and yeah, that is the structure for that. Uh, so that is how we generate our vitamin B5. So that was our uh, that was our pantothenate biosynthesis. Uh, I'll quickly go over um, turning it into uh, uh, coenzyme A. Uh, so with that, we have our uh, pantothenate here. Uh, with the uh, PAN-K using ATP, we then phosphorylate this uh, on this uh, hydroxyl here. Uh, then we have our cysteine come in, and we can see that that is, uh, so the nitrogen on the cysteine would attack uh, this carbon here and uh, displace this hydroxyl group here, and that would leave as, uh, as a water. And so now we see we have our cysteine on here. Uh, then we go through a decarboxylation, which removes this carboxyl group here, so that we end up just with this, with uh, this sulfur now bound to it. Uh, then we take another ATP. Uh, this hydroxyl group on the phosphate will bind to the uh, ATP, so we're releasing pyrophosphate, and we're now bound to uh, well, this would now be AMP, uh, and then we have uh, we have another ATP come in and uh, phosphorylate this hydroxyl group here, so that we end up with this product, which is our CoA, uh, and this sulfur here is <clears throat> what will bind onto onto. Uh, Onto, uh, onto other molecules like uh, fatty acids and things like that to generate acetyl-CoA. So acetyl-CoA would just have that sulfur there uh, going to the rest of the molecule, going to a carbon. Uh, so something like, like that would be acetyl-CoA. And we will be running into this uh, coenzyme A quite a bit in, in uh, future videos because it's used a lot in metabolism uh, for binding onto acetyl groups. And these acetyl groups can be, uh, can be larger molecules too. It could have a bunch of other uh, carbons going off of there, but it's just this sulfur bound to the, uh, this carbonyl carbon here that uh, is sort of of interest on here. And so, yeah, that is uh, the biosynthesis of vitamin B, and uh, which, as I said, is then used to generate the coenzyme A. Uh, and just to sort of uh, review here, we can either start with our uh, alpha-beta dihydroxy isovalerate or our L-valine, and uh, through uh, two different enzymes. These can be turned into this uh, alpha keto isovalerate. Uh, and then using uh, folate, uh, we can then add this uh, carbon and hydroxyl group on with the keto with the keto pentoate hydroxymethyltransferase, uh, generating the alpha keto pentoate. 
uh, and then this is reduced, uh, this carbonyl carbon here with the ketopentoate reductase using NADPH to NADP plus to generate our pentoate. And then we also need our aspartate, so we're going to decarboxylate that with aspartate 1 decarboxylase to generate beta alanine. And then our pantothenate synthetase using ATP will then combine these two together to generate our pantothenate here, our vitamin B5. And so that is, as I said, the um, the biosynthesis of vitamin B5. Uh, I hope you found this video enlightening and I will see you in the next video.